Coming to the female reproductive structure or the pistils, now we all know they are going to be consisting of the stigma, style and the ovary. Again, not going to detail about that, but we have to understand certain terms that you have learned in class 11 itself. Monocarpillary, we all know that it is also, pistil is also known as carpels. So when your gynecium consists of a single pistil, it is called monocarpillary. For it is more than one, it is obviously called the multi-carpillary. Now, if you are having a more than one condition and all the pistils are fused together, we call it a syncarpus condition and if they are free, then they are called apocarpus condition. Now, inside the ovary, again remember, this is very important, many people have confusion in here. So inside the ovary, this is my ovary. So here in this ovary, if you are, uh, there is this chamber and this chamber is called the ovarian locule or ovarian cavity. And inside this, you are going to have this uh, structures, connections here and these are called the these are called the uh, you know uh, placenta and to that placenta the megasporangia or the ovules are connected the ovules or megasporangia are connected here with the help of the placenta to the ovarian cavity understood so you have the ovary or the megasporangia that is connected to the placenta the placenta connects to the ovarian locule or ovarian cavity which is present inside the ovary now, number of megasporangia ovules can be one in some cases like mango. It can be more than one or more than one. There is many in case of uh, watermelons, uh, orchids. Okay, so it can be one or many. Now, the megasporangia structure, as you can see here, again, this is from the NCRT textbook. Now, here you can see that it is the structure of an anatropous ovule. Now there are different type of ovules, anatropous ovule, sarcinotropous ovules, many more are there. There are around uh, 5 to 6 different types. We will be learning that in detail later on but not according to the CBSC syllabus. So we will focus on this particular one. So in here, uh, this particular part, there is a funicle you can see. Now the funicle is going to help in connecting the entire the ovule with that of the placenta. And the reason where this uh, fusion occurs between the funicle and the body of the ovule that is called the hilum. Okay, hilum is the reason where there is the fusion. Now the integuments you can see here one here here there is outer and inner integuments. These are kind of protective envelope of the ovule, and they typically present around the entire ovule except at a place called the micropyle so that's why the name micropyle are end now in order to that integument you have the new cellus this particular area this particular area is the new cellus and these new cellus they are typically inner uh, sorry uh, sorry here it is written present inner to the new cellus it is not new cellus it is present inner to the integuments okay it is not new cellus it is integument so present inner to the integument and they are typically rich the cells are typically rich in reserve food material now why are they rich in reserve food material you'll see in a minute the embryo sac or the female gamete is present inside inner to that of the new cellus and these develop into the megaspore and one ovule typically have only one embryo sac and remember for this embryo sac or the female gametophyte to uh, develop into the megaspore you are going to have or you are going to have the uh, nutrient supplied with the help of the through the new cellus that's why new cellus cells are rich in the reserved food metal i hope you are clear with this this diagram is very important they have asked number of times along with this particular function of the different structure that are part of the anatropos ovule now what is megasporogenesis the process of formation of megaspore from the megaspore mother cell is called a megasporogenesis now the ovules typically differentiates a single megaspore mother cell right as we said ovule right ovule is what ovule is a ovule is a megasporangium now it typically differentiates into a single megaspore mother cell or mmc remember in case of male we use the word pmc here we use the word mmc megaspore mother cell now the mmc typically develops in the micropylar region of the new cellus as i said here micropylar region if you remember in this particular area micropylar region of the new cellus in this area okay and then uh, this particular MMC is going to contain 
a dense cytoplasm and a prominent nucleus. Now what happens? Typically the MMC is again going to be deployed in nature. This will undergo meiotic cell division. When it is going to undergo meiotic cell division, it is first going to give rise to the meiosis 1 will give rise to a two cell condition and then the uh, second meiotic division will give rise to four different cells. Now the meiosis results in the production of four megaspores. These are the four megaspores. Remember, these are the four megaspores. But of these, only one is the functional megaspore where the remaining all, remaining three degenerate. Now remember, the megaspore is from the chalazal end. The megaspore that is functional is from the chalazal end. So that is going to be uh, functional, whereas the remaining three are going to be degenerated. So now the functional megaspore, it develops into the entire female gametophyte, the female gametophyte or the embryo sac. Now remember as the embryo sac is developed from a single megaspore by degradation of the remaining three, single megaspore is developing functional megaspore. That's why the process is known as monosporic development. As the development occurs from a single megaspore, it is called monosporic development in case of in case of the female. Remember, if, the, if you are getting question on what is monosporic development, you have to explain this entire process step by step. Whatever point has been mentioned in here, it is very important. You have to know. You must know about it. Now, this again explains the process with the help with the help of a diagram. Again, very important, especially this particular last diagram. Okay, this particular diagram. We'll talk about in a minute. Now, as I said, the micropylar region of the new cellus, as I said, they have differentiated into a single megaspore mother cell or otherwise known as the MMC, microspore mother cell. Now, in the first mutic division, it will give rise to two cells, that is megaspore dyad, we are calling it. Then the next mutic division, that is meiosis 2, will give rise to the four mutic cells, that is going to be megaspore tetrad. As I said, only one of these, this will degenerate this will degenerate this will degenerate so only this particular one this, so this is from the chalazal end okay this is going to be the chalazal end only that is going to be functional and the remaining three is going to degenerate they are not going to function so that's why the monospore development name now what happens to this now the single function megaspore they will go undergo free nuclear division so at this stage, what you are saying, they are going to undergo free nuclear division. That means first the nucleus will divide, cytoplasm will not divide, cytoplasm is not going to get, uh, you know, uh, covered with the nucleus. So the nucleus will divide into two in the next four and then in the next one, eight. So three stages of uh, free nuclear division give rise to eight nuclei. But at that point, you have a single cell. Remember the single cell with eight nuclei. Next, what is going to happen? Cellularization is going to occur where these eight nuclei are going to organize themselves and start having the cytoplasm and the cell uh, membrane or the cell wall around them. Now of these eight nuclei, three goes to the chalazal end. Okay, three of them will go to the chalazal end. And these three will form the antipodals at the chalazal end. Now, two of them again move to the Synergies. Actually, three of them move to the, uh, you know, the micropylar end. So three move to the micropylar end, three move to the antipodal. Uh, sorry, three move to the chalazal end, three move to the micropylar end. Three in the chalazal end form the antipodals. Out of the three of the micropylar end, two form the synergies and one develops into the egg cell. Now we have already covered eight, sorry, uh, seven and three plus three, six. Okay. Uh, 3 plus 3, 6 and in the center you are going to have the again a uh, single cell that is going to be the central cell and the central cell will going to have two nuclei. Okay, so again at the final uh, stage what happens a mature condition at the chalazal end you are going to have three antipodals and at the micropylar end you are going to have two synergids, one egg and one central cell. Okay. And the synergids typically have a thickening called the filiform apparatus. Filiform apparatus. Now, what are these and why are they important? Now, remember the condition here is a seven celled eight nuclei condition. Very important concept. They asked a number of times seven celled eight nuclei condition. So, how it is seven celled? Now, seven cell in the sense that it is going to have three antipodals, 
two synergies and one excel and one central cell total seven but how they are having eight nuclei now three antipodal cells have three antipodal nucleus two synergies have two synergy nucleus one excel have one egg nucleus but the central cell remember this the central cell is going to have not one nucleus but two nucleus and this is called the polar nuclei is very important that is called the polar nuclei now remember we had eight nucleus in the beginning when we had the uh, free nuclear division of the eight nuclei they organize themselves into seven cells but they manage the maintain the eight nuclei by packing two nucleus in the central cell and remaining all the cells have only one nucleus with them hence the seven cell a nuclei condition very important now the egg apparatus there's a word called egg apparatus the cells of the micropylar end that is called egg apparatus they represent the egg apparatus what is that the synergies and the egg cell together they are going to call the egg apparatus now as i said the filiform apparatus is the thickenings of the synergies now why are they important these are going to help in guiding the pollen tube into the synergies and from where the pollen uh, pollen tube is going to release the male gametes so guiding the pollen tube into the uh, you know uh, the synergies they are going to uh, the filiform apparatus is going to play a, a very important uh, role now once you have both the male and female uh, gametes that is going to be having your uh, male gametophyte and the female gametophyte containing the male and female gamete respectively then they go for the pollination and once the pollination is completed they go for the uh, fertilization by extending the pollen tube it reaches the ovule the male gamete reaches the ovule through the pollen tube and fertilizes fertilizes and leading to the formation of the zygote that will develop into the seeds later on again this particular part we'll discuss in detail how the pollen tube is going to form what is compatible pollen grains how they're going to give it to the two different uh, male gametes right all of these things we'll discuss and how it reaches there what happens in the fertilization all of these we'll discuss in the upcoming sessions there are many times uh, students have doubts sir can one uh, flower have more than one because because you can see many a times what happens is one fruit have number of seeds yes each of the ovule give rise to the seeds and one ovary can have more than one uh, you know ovule and you can see how they can be organized you can see how they can be organized in the center you have the you know placenta and from the placenta you can have the number of ovules connected and depending on the number of ovules you'll get the number of seeds so do not get confused with ovules and ovary ovary contains ovules are present inside the ovary and the number of ovules can be more than one in the ovary the next processes we'll talk in the next uh, video sessions